Demons Discuss TV Review, Season 1, Episode 6. Welcome to Demons Discuss, the unofficial podcast about the All Souls universe and the topics that orbit it. We are your hosts, Angela, Jean, and Valerie. I am Valerie, and with me is Angela and Jean. Hello, ladies. Hello. Hello, everyone. And Jean, what are we talking about today? We left off on a high note, literally. Satu had just invaded airspace at Septur and uh, scooped up Diana. And we are on our way, presumably, to LaPierre. Oh. Ooh. And, man, the opening sequence in this episode is just beautiful <laughs> in a very <laughs> scary, scary way. So I have study lust for Gerbert's <laughs> study in the castle. Oh mm-hmm. my God. Gorgeous. The telescopes and gadgets. This is going to be a bumpy episode though. Why do you say that? You know, the whole La Pierre thing. It's just, ugh, it's kind of gruesome. I know, I know. But I'm I'm trying to find the light in it where I can. And his study is, the set designers did an awesome job. Look at you, the eternal optimist. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always the eternal optimist. Besides, Baldwin's in this episode. Yay, he is. <laughs> I'm a happy camper. <laughs> it's chapter 30, Angela. We got it. I know. <laughs> finally. Finally. <laughs> All right, before we dive into the Baldwin. Can, can, we, can we buy the rights, the royalty rights to, to the song, finally? <laughs> yeah, can we roll around in the Baldwin for a while while we're here? Reference the rights. We can't afford it. We have great patrons, but they don't pay us. <laughs> so so do we still have to pay if we, like, sing it badly? Uh, yeah. They'll Damn. still come after us. <laughs> All right, guys. Speaking of patrons, it's time to shout out to our patrons because they are honestly why we can be here hosting an independent podcast we're not sponsored by any underwear toothbrush shaving or food delivery services don't forget the mattress or the mattress <laughs> <laughs> so we pretty much can format the show how we like we are however sponsored by yeah. listeners like you and our listeners are really the only creatures we owe anything to so yeah. without you guys we'd be talking to ourselves which is well, cool we're only talking to 15 of you anyways so. I, right, know. Right, right. I know right right Oh. Well, and you forgot something. We don't have to have a mattress sponsor either. Although with this particular episode and the fact that Matthew slept so soundly, it may have been appropriate. It might have been good. It might have been good. <laughs> hey, well, the underwear ad could have come in handy here too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's going to be one of those episodes. <laughs> I know. Here we go. So anyway, my point is, without you guys, we'd be talking to ourselves, which is cool. But I suppose if you're running a podcast, it's not really optimal. <laughs> <laughs> it's not an objective we had in mind. No. <laughs> so, Angela, why would someone become a patron? Why? Because you can get more demons, twice the fun. You can get us weekly, so you'd have our podcast. And then you get on the off weeks, you get our after show. And that can range the gamut of topics. It could be eight hours related. It could be work related. It could be whatever we feel like talking about, but uh, we never run out of stuff to talk about. That's right. This is true. And for the people who are just tuning in with us, I know you've been hearing us weekly, but this won't last forever. This is only a temporary thing while we cover these TV episodes. Then we go fortnightly and then it'll be every other week. But if you become a patron, you can still listen to us weekly. So that's great. It's super. And we have swag. We have swag. Yay. And our swag is growing by leaps and bounds. Oh, it is. Get more and more imaginative and Demon Roulet. Demon Roulet. Take a chance with us. Pri- the prize this last quarter was a really super awesome binge watch mug. Yay. Yeah. Um, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll figure out what we're giving out next. Our okay. swag kind of oh, multiplies yeah. like gremlins. After midnight, Valerie eats something yes. and, then, and, and, then, and then she <laughs> gets to her. Valerie eats after midnight, <laughs> yeah. we wake up in the morning and there's like a new graphic for swag. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> yes. Sometimes after midnight, that's when it happens, you know. <laughs> it's when the man is, they call it the magic hour for a reason. So if you guys would like to become a patron, go to patreon.com slant demons discuss. Yay! All right. So this week's random patron sponsor is Cynthia Helmricks. Thank you, Cynthia. Thank you, Cynthia. Hey, Cynthia. Yeah. Thank you for sponsoring this episode and becoming a patron. Okay. So now this part, we've been doing this for a few weeks now. You guys know the drill, but in case you don't, most of this episode will be a review on the TV show 
only. We will attempt, attempt, mind you, to only make <laughs> observations <laughs> on what is presented to us on screen without spoiling the books. Excuse me. I resemble that remark. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. With Baldwin in this episode, I don't know that we're going to be able to refrain from I, uh, spoiling. Yeah, and No. Right. Well, yeah, I mean, we can it, refer to them. Yes. We can refer to them, but let's not. Let's try. Attempt. That's why I yes. use attempt. <laughs> let's attempt to uh, refrain from actually spoiling. The pin on the grenade is very shaky, but I will try to keep oh. it in place. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody found it in the basement after World War II. There's no right. freaking guarantees here. So those of you who don't want the books to be spoiled, we will warn you prior to going into the spoiler zone so you can stop the episode and join up with yeah. us next week. The rest of you that don't really mind can follow us after the break and we will speak freely about the book TV show comparison. Hey, Ellery, where are we at on our fuck meter? Oh, God. It's up there. It's up there. I haven't been keeping track. I know we talked about keeping track, but... <laughs> 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 Uh, I think Baldwin said it. Uh, Javert said it a yeah, couple I times. Mean, we, we've got we've got it coming up in this episode quite a bit. So. Yeah, lots of fucks. <laughs> you, you better. Yeah, there's lots of fucks to give here, people. Yeah, <laughs> that's yep. right. Okay, so disclaimer done. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> we, and we've managed to disclaim the disclaimer. So. I know. <laughs> <laughs> that's how demons roll. Okay, guys, we have to hit the road. Jump in, put your seatbelts on, and secure that back gate because we don't want any anybody falling out during this puppy ass ride we're about to take okay and it is a ride oh this is a good one yeah, demons be off-roading for sure Ooh. hang on people hang on all right when we left off last week we were feeling all woozy because diana and matthew finally committed to each other with their souls and bodies kind of i don't know the word Mr. Good was uh, want to say in an interview that was released today, digits were involved. <laughs> yeah. Direct quote. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> I told you he was looking for his keys under the car seat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Ooh, that's taking a turn. Oh. Anyway. <laughs> so the next morning we see Matthew sleeping because Diana wore him out somehow. Wore I, that, which is like got me confused, but that, that's a visit for another day. Okay. <laughs> Perhaps the after show. That, yes, maybe. That's an yes. After show. That's, that's good. Put a pin in that. We'll do the after show. Yeah. Okay. So Diane is feeling so giddy that she kisses him and goes off for her exercise to, I guess, because last night wasn't enough. You know, she had to run mm -hmm. some more on the ground. Yeah. I, I'm yeah. like kind of understanding. I'm not understanding why she had so much adrenaline. To, as one would want to say, I would have thought it would have been all dissipated. Yeah. It's yeah. a complete juxtaposition. And I'm not saying that like in a clever or like, ooh, did you notice that? But yeah. it's it is odd that Matthew would be the one sleeping and she's going for the run. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Exactly. Just saying. Based on what we saw anyway. I don't know. Maybe maybe more stuff happened. We don't know. Yeah. So after she takes a jog around the property, whoosh, she's snatched up by Creature Unknown. Mm. Mm, and that's where we left off. Okay, so we open up episode six and find out who took her. Satu. Satu. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Our yeah. resident Lurch is not lurching around. Hey, 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 hey. Leave my birthday twin alone. No calling no. her Lurch anymore. <laughs> Let's see here. Satu. That too. Can not only freak viewers out, she can Yeah, fly. I have to say, yeah, this isn't a figure. spoiler. I was just as stunned in the TV show when she plucked Diana off in, at the end of the episode as I was in the book. It was that, yeah. it was that striking. Yeah. yeah. Even knowing that it was about to happen, it was like, wow. Yes. They did an outstanding job with that. So, Satu can fly. She not only can drown an ignorant witch hunter in the ring of fire in the woods, she can snatch someone up and fly away with them. So, good on her. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This girl is no joke. So, they're yeah. headed towards a castle while Matthew is giving Once us our obligatory opener. Yay. And, and Gerbert and his luggage <laughs> yeah. is making their way through the castle. We see Gerbert climbing the steps of this castle and the one that Satu and Diana are flying towards, we assume at this point. And he's got the case carrying, mm -hmm. um, you know, Alexa. Head in a box. Head in a box. <laughs> Mary Diana. <laughs> we'll box. call her Alexa. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> Although she's kind of stuck on saying only one thing. I know. Yeah. It's a 
broken, Alexa. <laughs> no. I hope they bought the extended warranty. I tell you. Okay, so they fly into the castle, and Satu just drops her. Yeah. Bam. Yeah. Oops. That was like, oops. Shit. I guess you can't fly. <laughs> Let's see if she lands. Oh, oh, you can't. Yeah. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Damn. I, I just thought that was harsh. I was like, I know. Okay. See, audience, I know I said attempt. I know it was in the books. She kind of just let her loose to see if she could fly. But you don't get the impact until you see that. You're like, wow, he, yeah. she just dropped her 20 feet from the from the sky. The funny thing, though, in all this was like, Diana never struck me as too worse for the wear for being dropped from 20 feet up. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. True. And that's actually, well, I'll save it for the spoiler zone. Even if she she could fly or even if uh, I don't think she would have let her down easily regardless no no okay so can we talk about how Gerber comes off straight off creep here <gasps> oh yes. god when he smelled her I was like yeah a witch in flight I haven't seen that for many many years it's difficult to know when she's been with Dick Claremont where her scent begin and his end. Is it lost? As well as the book that attracted Matthew to you? Women, after all, are his weakness. Take Women that. are Matthew's weakness. I mean, he would know. I mean, he groomed one. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. That we know of. Yeah. Oof. Ooh, he is like, if a, pedo- a creepy pedophile could be an all-age pedophile, that'd be him. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm-hmm. He did well. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> did really well. All right. So Satu and Gerber are having a negotiation here. And uh, Satu's like, stick to what we agreed to because, you know, Gerber's looking all hungry. She's like, yeah, I want to take this with yeah, you. Do he's my like, thing. Mm, here's my snack. And Satu puts an end to that. It's like, no, you need to stick to what we agreed to. And after Gerber leaves, Satu tells her straight. She's like, I want to know how powerful you are. <laughs> yeah, you're, a bishop. you're a bishop. That means something. Right. It's like, I wonder why you can't fly. Hmm. Yeah. And, your fam- and then she goes in, she goes into this whole diatribe about, geez, your family kind of sucks. They didn't bother to teach you shit. Right. Yeah. What's going on? Yeah. Let me help you. Mm-hmm. You can't fly or you won't. And Satu does seem kind of pissed. I, I feel like she feels offended. Yeah, that's that, a good word. Yes. That Diana's parents or Diana's guardians didn't take the time to show her her magic. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. Satu feels like she was brought up right. She was brought up to take pride in her magic. Well, and the other thing is, too, is it's like, wait a minute, everybody talks about how you guys are so high and mighty and, and better than everyone else. You really aren't. Right. I think that's yeah. part. Her offense is not only offended for Diana because Diana's family failed her, but I think her offense also has to do about the perceptions of her versus the bishops and the greater witch family, mm-hmm. too. Yeah. And uh, Satu goes on to tell uh, Diana, her mother showed her how to embrace her power. You know, maybe out in the mm-hmm. woods, that's okay, but probably not in Cambridge. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, embrace your power out of the woods where no one can see you, but okay. Uh, I, I, I digress. Don't think, I don't think which fire in the child and the eagle would be, you know, encouraged. No. <laughs> at all. No. So Satu is offering her services, you know, being benevolent right here. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Um, you know, she's letting her know you don't need to be alone. Diana lets her know, hey, I'm not alone. I got my vampire man. <laughs> <laughs> I got a little something, something going on. Uh, so when the vampires mention Satu changes tax, she just loses it. She's like, yeah. she lies and she says, Matthew killed Jillian. I'm like, whoa, what do you guys think of that? That lie. Just, I don't know if it was, honestly, it's like, did she, did she, I was uncertain. It's like, okay, so we saw her with Sylvia. Did she finally die? Did she right. die we, of we her don't wounds know. after she... Yeah, I was... Her eyes were rolled back in her head and she was like barely I mean, like able she was to on, read the door yeah, on death's door. door. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. I thought for sure that she like spewed her, spewed her spew and croaked. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, as she true. should at, at that point in time. Yes. I'm kind of done with Jillian, but that's my <laughs> personal opinion. <laughs> <laughs> not feeling any love for how that character is kept lingering. Right. Diana won't believe it, though. She's like, Matthew would never do that. And it's like, Diana, do you know your man? Yeah. Mm, yeah. He might. Oh, he 
<laughs> he would. And this is where the aggressive magic starts. Yes. Oh my God. Yeah. However, Oof. Diana fights back. She starts fighting back. Um, Satu tries to get into her and she's like throwing witch win and she pre- protects yeah. her mind and she does all that thing. And uh, then we switch scenes. We're up in that uh, enclosed room, which we're assuming is still in LaPierre, right? Yes. Up with Joe I think Vera. it is because that's where it's up and down those stairs. It's like kind of the towers. And you know, what's really interesting is kind of a juxtaposition of Matthew's lair. True. Yes. And Septor. You know, he's, he, it's Septor and LaPierre. And, and I, I was really interested that Gerbert actually had a study. I mean, it looks like a fully fitted out study and books and... He didn't let that go to Roids. No. That, that was pretty sick. Yeah. That yeah. was pretty swanky, yes. if you ask me. <laughs> it reminded me of Matthew's um, lab. Right. Mm-hmm. In some ways. Except, well, except for the whole open window thing, but I guess if you're a vampire, you're not worried about the draft. No. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> so, uh, Gerbert is talking about the two witches here to Mary Diana, uh, one light and one dark, and he's, he's like, hey, there's one light, one dark, and Mary Diana's just kind of looking at him like, blink, yeah. blink. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the blink, blink was the best part. She's just like, yeah, no, you're not yeah. getting anything else out of me, dude. You, I'm the head, you made me the head in a box. I'm not giving you any favors anymore. At one point, is Mary Diana like, I am so tired of your shit, dude. Yes. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> God. It's like the goddess has PMS and she's shit, sick of your shit. Yeah. The moose should have been coming in somewhere. So back to Diana and Satu. I love when Diana got angry and fought back. Yes. How dare you talk about my parents? You didn't know them. I was the one that was betrayed. I grew up believing the humans and their ignorance killed my parents. But it was witches. Teresa Palmer's stellar in the scene where she turns around and she's like, don't even mention my parents. You know, witches killed my parents, you know, and she starts pushing at Satu and whoa, I, okay, Diana, whoa, she yeah. had it in her. I mean, Satu was just feral. She was great. She was. Yeah. She, she had a goal. <laughs> she, she wasn't going to let anything get in the way of her goal. She, she had Diana there and she's going she to make relentless. the most of it. Yeah. I mean, Malin did an amazing job. Oh, amazing. I agree. And if you think back, if you've, if you've seen on social media, this scene mm-hmm. when they're against the, the green screen or the blue screen or whatever it is, and they're on wires and they're all smiles and happy and everything. And just to think like how much they channeled into oh, this scene to be so adversarial and it, it just came out spectacular. But then to, to flip back to the behind the scenes and to see that they're just, yeah. you know, happy. It's like, okay, well, here's where you push me. Yes. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, and, and Malin's, I, her, her physicality is just perfect. It is. Yeah. It is. Which is kind of odd considering the way you just juxtapose Satu and Diana. And you would think given the spell binding and the adrenaline and whatnot that just courses through Diana that she's almost unusually calm. I mean, she's, mm-hmm. which just struck me as odd. Yeah, you're right. I, I can see that. N- no hyper, no anxiety attack, no nothing. But you can't see anything bubbling at the surface, although it's there. But she's yeah. almost very calm. Yeah. almost Like I said, almost too calm. Mm-hmm. Focus, determined. <laughs> or maybe, I mean, her stubbornness and, and defiance <laughs> often gets yeah. in her way. So maybe it even yes. gets in the way of yeah. anxiety. That's true. true. True, true, true. All right. So uh, back at Sep Tour, you know, Matthew's waking up alone. Lovely. He's kind of pale, too. Yeah. We get a full Just, shot of the scars and the body of work yeah. they are attached to. It's not bad. Yeah, it's <laughs> not bad. <laughs> Speaking of the underwear ads. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> not bad. He's got lovely legs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Here's a wonderful point. I'm digressing, but with a bit of seriousness to it. Um, on social media, with the the debuts and all all the other con- countries, there's been kind of like this undercurrent uh, with respect to Matthew Good's physical stature. And oh, right. I mean, some of it some of it has like bordered on body shaming. Yeah, which is, yeah. is is wrong, hundred percent wrong. I think he's and in fine shape. <laughs> I think he's in great shape. And they keep saying, "Oh, well, that's not somebody who's going to be a knight and right swing a broadsword and da da da." Da-da-da. Well, when Matthew was turned, he wasn't a soldier. He wasn't a mercenary. He was not swinging a broadsword. He was a mason who was building buildings. Mm-hmm. He was. So he 
he's not even after he's turned, he's not going to have the same physique as a mercenary like Gallo Glass or a professional soldier like Hancock. So okay. mm, shut up. I'm going to have a little bit of a spoiler here uh, for the book. So yeah. I apologize, audience. But Philippe said he let himself get puny. So we're looking at puny. the puny Matthew. Right. Right. <laughs> right. right. On top right. of it, it's, it's puny Matthew. And Matthew, Matthew is still not going to have been turned. Like, I'm sorry. When he got out of bed, I didn't think puny. No. Sorry. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I thought tall and lean, like yes. one of my favorites. Yes. It's yes. got good legs. Good legs. Mm-hmm. And nice shoulders. Don't forget the shoulders and the forearms. So. Uh, yeah, good. Diana's gone. <laughs> And, well, we're Back just to our in, coverage. We're enjoying the view. <laughs> yes, Diana's gone. Let's take gone. a moment and enjoy the view. And uh, yeah, that's where we see Matthew get out of bed and he's like, oh, where's Diana? Anyway, back to statue. Str- and mm-hmm. she's strumming her drum, her little drum. And mm-hmm. she's conjuring a spell to discover what's inside of Diana. She lifts her in the air and tosses her aside when she didn't get what she wanted. Oh my God, this scene was a lot because oh, yeah. this scenery was, it's just what I pictured in the books. Yes. You know, yes, her getting yeah. tossed around and this alley with pebbles and, everywhere. And hung upside down. Mm-hmm. Oh, and the worst way to much. come. Yep. Okay, so now we're switching scenes and we're back. Oh, where are we? We're in Madison, New York with Emily. And she's on the porch scrying, doing her thing. Mm-hmm. And I love the special effects in this scene because the <sighs> figures that came out were almost exact images of Satu and Diana in the same positions we left them off yes. in LaPierre. Yes. And it was subtle. And it was perfect. And it, it was, was, yeah. Not so too cartoony. We're seeing what she's seeing and she's freaked mm-hmm. the fuck out. I mean, rightfully so. And then we go back to LaPierre and Satu's in a crazy state of opening Diana while she's being suspended upside down. And that's when she started cutting into her with a fire and I could barely <sighs> watch it. How terrifying. The Dreams were so real. I mean, I don't know. I know. I, 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 what I imagine what they would sound like. I've never heard such a thing, but I, they were just blood curdling. I know. Yes. I was like, oh my God. She was just like, ah! And I'm like, oh, wow. I mean, that I snake in the pool skimmer screaming. Yeah. I can tell you that for sure. <laughs> oh, how terrifying. How terrifying. Chilling. Just chilling. All right. And uh, sorry, there's a lot of switching back and forth. So we're now back to Septour. And uh, Matthew's frantically looking for Diana. And at the same time, Baldwin has come to collect her for the congregation as he promised the members. Mm -hmm. And these two competing desires will predictably come to a head as we know. (laughs) (sighs) (sighs) Meanwhile, we flash back to LaPierre and Satu's got Diana and still trying to find out what's inside of Diana. And it really gives you a sense of the urgency required to get her out of that situation. So hurry up, Baldwin and Matthew. Let's, Let's get her out of there because at this time, we're looking at Satu. Her eyes are all bloodshot because of all the energy she's spending. She's Mm -hmm. still focused and we're like, it's getting scary. Yeah. And then we cut back to Matthew and Baldwin doing their thing, which... Let's talk the hell out of this. Let's discuss the hell out of this. (laughs) (laughs) We got the bite, Angela. Where is she? Yes. Uh, I would talk about a different kind of blood curdling scream. That's yeah. Like, Although yes. no, it looked like Matthew had the upper hand in the show, which I that's not played out in my head. I didn't think. I thought it was more yeah. an equal tussle, if not, of course, Baldwin. <laughs> Damn yes. <that> hand. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, Matthew and Baldwin in full aggression was a sight to see. It was like, Whoa. yeah, I was just waiting yeah. for that table to break. It was great. Here comes Mart. She reports that someone else was there, and Diana's gone. So, oh dear. We have a problem on our hands. Oops. Oops. But, you know, Matthew just threw him on the table and took a nice bite out of him before that. So, eh, well, <laughs> God. All right. Back to LaPierre. Satu's not looking really good. She's all bloodshot. She's continuing to try to open Diana up and Diana is resisting somehow. Finally, Satu's getting frustrated. She makes her final mark and collapses on the ground. Mm-hmm. Diana goes down in a heap once Satu loses her hold. And that's where we leave them. Meanwhile, back at Septour, they're tracking Diana. Baldwin is amazed that a witch could be so brazen to enter to Claremont territory. Mm-hmm. And then Baldwin discloses that Knox was 
eager to interrogate her, but he can't fly. So they don't yeah, know so, the wealth yeah. of Satu's powers. He knows the limits of Peter's powers, which I think yes. is interesting. Yes. I wonder if they have to check in when they're in the congregation and say, okay, what powers do you have? Kind of like Pokemon cards. You know? <laughs> well, don't, don't forget <laughs> in that early the back. <laughs> they had a report. They must have because they had that report on Di- Diana's powers or lack thereof in the archives yeah. that Satu and Domenico were messing around with a couple episodes back. Yeah. Maybe Satu's got some undocumented power that, you know. Yeah. Peter just... <laughs> Could be. Yeah. If you were paying attention to the world of All Souls, that may in fact be the case, considering that her affinities seem to be all over the place, even as a weaver. Right. Kind of, well, see, and that kind of reminds me of Harry Potter, you know, uh, well, in the books anyway. They had to, in order to like disappear, they had to get like a license and register to like Mm -hmm. turn into, if you turned into an animal, you had to register with the Ministry of Magic or something like that. Which animal it was. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So you can freak people out out of the blue. Yeah. And be unregistered. (laughs) <laughs> One thing from earlier with Baldwin when he first made his appearance on the scene to come collect Diana, and Angela mentioned this in our social media, and I, it's just still cracks me the hell up, is the fact that the tail tail identification on that helicopter was GD VIP. Yes, that's right. <laughs> that had yeah, to be VIP. Pur- that had to be purposeful. <laughs> so well, I, our, so it actually perfect. isn't. <laughs> our, our friend Stephen did explain. I don't remember what he oh, said, really? but yeah, did he? yeah. He did. He clarified did he? what the because, what the GD stands for. It wasn't. Yeah. It wasn't what I said it was. But I still think it is goddamn VIP. <laughs> I do too. That's, what, that's 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 in my head, and that's where it's going to stay there. Okay. Well. Okay. Close your ears, then, Gene. <laughs> no, that's okay. I can I can stand hearing the. In the United but... States, when you register a tail number, the uh, for a civil aircraft, you would put a N in front of the numbers, mm-hmm. and for Great Britain. Uh, the larger UK, it is Golf Delta oh, GD. Okay. So there you go. <laughs> so everybody's goddamn. Goddamn. But, VI- but VIP, come on. <laughs> no, that, that had to be planned. I'm sorry. That had to be planned. It would have been v- it would have been VIV, but he can't let everyone know that he's a vampire. So. Yeah. <laughs> yes. He's, he's on the down. That's him being on the down low. Right. <laughs> right. For Baldwin. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's subtlety on his part. Goddamn VIP. We'll just stick with that. Okay, girls. Yeah, it works. <laughs> it's fiction. We can do it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And since I love the dynamic between the congregation members, please indulge me as I do a little screenplay on how it played in my head, okay? Okay. Indulge me. We open the scene, and in the witch's archives, Peter's answering the phone, and it's like, hey, what's up, Baldwin? And Baldwin goes, Peter, you punk, where's Diana? And Peter's like, whoa, what? Easy there. You were supposed to get her, bro. And then and Baldwin's like, don't fuck with me. I know the witches took her. And which one of you fuckers did it? <laughs> can you, can, and that's not even like your head script. That's pretty much the script. I, I, was, I was just going to say, can you please differentiate of what, what uh, F-bombs were dropped yeah. for real versus yeah. what <laughs> you're ad-libbing? Yeah. But I, 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 don't, yeah, I don't think those were ad-libbed up Well, he did say, don't fuck with me, Peter. So, but, yeah, you know. Yeah, he did call him a fucker, too. Yeah, yeah. I have to say, so, that is my favorite fuck of all with, so yeah. far. Don't, don't. don't <laughs> Don't fuck with me, Peter, because the way he said it was like such intensity and, and genuine. It, it was just it was almost as intense as my all time favorite one from uh, Mommy Dearest when uh, Faye Dunaway goes, don't yes. fuck with me, fellas. In the boardroom. this rodeo before. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that, that is like right in the top 10 of all movie movie and TV fucks. Right. There. right. <laughs> so all Peter's them. like, whoa, dude, my congregation witch pal is right in front of me. And Satu, his name's Sigismund. We'll get to it. This is not in my script. Sigismund didn't work. It didn't flow. (laughs) Siggy does, though. So Peter's like, whoa, dude, Siggy (laughs) is right in front of me. And Satu, uh, she's here, too. Yeah, yeah, that's the mm-hmm. ticket. Sure, sure. He, she's she's like right around the corner. Yeah, I just saw her a minute ago. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. And Bob was like, if you're lying, I'll bite your face off. Mm-hmm. <laughs> if you're lying, you're dying. <laughs> He actually said, uh, you better not be lying to me, Peter, or God help yeah. you if you lie to me. <laughs> yeah. So the phone hangs up and Peter's like, damn, Sigismund. That's the other witch, by the way. <laughs> Baldwin is mad. So, um, you know where Satu is? 
because I don't. Now, wait. Now, at this point, we don't know anything that Sigismund is nefarious or has any bad intentions. He's just kind of quiet, like a, like running in the background. Uh, the witch operating yeah. system running yeah, in the background. She's just like, just chilling. <laughs> just yeah. chilling. Yeah. Well, and, and this whole scene with, with Baldwin, too, is like... Did you notice how how he's in blue and burgundy? Almost like you're supposed to think that his loyalties are split rather than the blues of the blues that Matthew and Diana are, tend to wear, and then the burgundies you see Juliet and Gerbert and the congregation vampires tend to have the burgundies hmm. and whatnot in their color palette. And even with um, Isabel, before you know that she's truly on their side, she yeah, tends she to wear a lot of burgundy. Yeah, like a wine color. Wow, mm-hmm. I was gonna say you're you're taking me on a right and I don't know where we're going but <laughs> there we go <laughs> I, I get the feeling that the costume costume designer was playing with burgundy as as a signifier of uncertainty of lo- uh, undetermined loyalty, loyalty. yeah mm. that's interesting that is interesting especially with the vampires and, right. and, and then even with with Juliet it's like and that, that's how that burgundy is so deceptive because it's like oh is he with, are they with the van guys with Gerber and them and the status quo right, right. but then when you think about it it's like Juliet I mean she's splitting her loyalties in that her madness and her love for Matthew and her uh, obligations to Gerbert. Right. So, I what mean, was Sigismund wearing? <laughs> oh, don't say it. Don't do that. We don't right. know. Come on. You already know we don't know. <laughs> Siggy's a, a worker bee. Oh, okay. He's just in the background doing his work and trying to like keep his head down and like, I don't need to get involved in this shit. I, you know, I, do, you mean, do you know, in my head, Sigismund was like, after Peter just turned around and said, uh, where's Satu? And I'm thinking, he's thinking, Keep me out of your drama, pal. Right, I'm sick of your dude. shit. <laughs> I really don't. I don't need this shit in my life right now. Okay, so the real dialogue actually went like this. Baldwin, where are you? Sud here in the archives, waiting for you. Don't fuck with me, Peter. A witch has taken Diana from Septona. Where is she? I assure you, this has nothing to do with me. You're the most powerful witch in the congregation. You are clearly involved in this. But where is Sigismund and the new witch? Sigismund is stood in front of me and Satu. Satu's here too. God help you if you're lying to me, Peter. Where is Satu? <laughs> Yay! A clip. Yay! Peter's the worst. I know I said that last episode, but man, he keeps hitting new lows. I just oh, yeah. uh, he's like he's like shady, sleazy, evil. He's not like just he doesn't care how he gets his power. He's gonna just yeah. Keep it. He's uh, to me to me Peter's worse than Jabir. I mean Jabir is like your classic mustache twirling. Hey, I'm evil. I revel in it. And, yeah, I and feel I don't like have to be underhand. No, he he's not underhanded about being evil. He's just fucking evil. I feel then, like Jabir. He's that's that's how he operates. That's how how yeah. he rolls and no, everybody no. knows that about him. Yeah, you're but right. But Peter is like underhanded, which makes yeah. it worse somehow. He presents himself as respectable. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, yeah. in the whole way he tried to play down, oh yeah, your mom and I were good friends and I'm I- I'm sorry I kept away and didn't make it to the funeral. And, he's one of those though, yeah. that he, he believes what he's doing is right and he believes that the methods he's using yes. is justified. Yes. yes, yes. Again, that combined with the shady just makes it so much worse than just like, yeah, I'm evil and and I want what I want. And mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm just going to go ahead and do it. Like exactly. At least, at least you know what you're dealing with with Gerber. Yeah. Yes. He's he's just out there and kind of an open book in a lot of ways. But exactly. Peter, it's like Peter and Jillian both are like, mm, no. I think uh, the deceitfulness to me just ramps it all up a level. I don't know that Jillian was deceitful. I think she was more. Yeah, she was because she was lying to Diana about talking to Peter and this and that and the other thing. But and I think that's. I think because she's weak. I think she's weak. I don't. Yeah, I don't think she was intentionally going out there to be deceitful. But when it comes down to it, her loyalty will wind up with the person of power. Diana's not going to be able to help her anywhere. So yeah. Peter's the default. It, that's just how it is. Sorry. Yeah. When the chips I know, fall, I, I, that's where. But she's I'm just going. saying. It to me, it, it's. I, I find that more distasteful. Yeah. I mean, if she if she were Hunger Games soldier, she would be. She would be have the same fate. She'd be reporting to the the capital, and she'd be picked off right she's away. She's fodder. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now we're at La Pierre and uh, Satu's dragging Diana into the castle because, uh, yeah, she she tried, man. She- <laughs> 
<laughs> she tried, but she couldn't get anything out of Diana. Diana's pleading, you don't have to do this, Satu. The Satu's just so frustrated, she puts Diana in timeout, down the hole, yep. the oubliette. Just mm-hmm. just sit there for a while while I figure out what to do with you, because I'm just tired. I was, but no, literally, I was wondering, is she getting tired? Yeah, I, I, that's what I saw. I saw when she's like going down there, she's like, oh, I'm just tired. I, I just need to put you somewhere right. until I can finish this. Mm-hmm. But man, she threw her down there head down. I mean, is Diana a cat? What the fuck? Yeah. No. <laughs> What's going on there? After that fall, Diana should have died. Seriously. It's like 60 feet down in an oubliette, right? Yeah. 60 or 80 feet yes. down. Um, Yeah, put a pin on that because we'll discuss that further. Fuck yeah. it. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Satu winds up being one of the ones screaming in the scene. She is screaming because she's lost her power. She Peter did warn her, though. You know, I feel yeah, a little sorry for yeah. her, but not much. And the first time I saw this, I automatically assumed it was Diana screaming, but it was actually Satu screaming mm-hmm. because we we see Gerber. He hears this scream and it's Satu. So, well, so back to Gerber's little section of the castle. And Mary Diana is still telling him the same thing. Beware the <laughs> witch with the blood of the lion, the lion and lamb. Yeah. Oh, Alexa's broken, yo. No, but she has, <laughs> so has, broken. It's got to be intriguing, though, for non-book readers. It really does. I mean, what does it mean? Yeah. What does it mean? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. And then Gerber hears the scream and runs out to see what the commotion is. So now back at set tour, Matthew's losing his damn mind. As you would expect, he's mapping out a route to follow because he's being Matthew. Reactionary. He just flies by the seat of his pants. That's how he does. Oh, Luckily, I know. Hot mess Matthew's back. Yep. Luckily, Yay. he's surrounded by some logic thinkers to talk him down from the damn tree. Yep. Birds. No, Mar- no, flower, no flower map, though. No, no. no. Oh, well, well. Mm. Mart, Isabeau, and Baldwin are really there. Think, stay alive. Yeah, they're there for frantic there Matthew. So Baldwin is at, he, I feel like he asked a reasonable question here. Is this witch really worth going to war against our own for? Yes. I thought that was reasonable. Yes. Yeah. Matthew's fervent response apparently was the didn't. Best. He, did, he did not think it was reasonable. <laughs> no, he did not. <laughs> yes. <laughs> By the way, that's the answer. He yes. should have broken the table with that. I think that'd have been a good effect. You think? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Take notes. Take notes, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Season two, more table breaking. Thank you. He's a vampire. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> shown his strength right there. Yeah. Yes. I feel like this uh, whole exchange between Baldwin and Matthew throughout was perfect. I do too. Actually. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It I, could have been longer. There was some more. They, they, yeah. Well, we'll get to that at the end. I, I do agree with that. I was going to say for any TV watchers, if you just go to the library and read these specific chapter chapters. 30. Chapter 30. Chapter 30. Even yeah. 31 to 32. 30, yeah. 30, yeah. 30, 31, 32. It just will enhance your viewing pleasure. Absolutely. Many fold. Okay. So back to La Pierre. Yay. Anyway. <laughs> Gerber finds Satu slumped in the hall and he's like, uh, what happened? Mm-hmm. Where is the witch? And Satu, she musters up all of her energy to say down the hole. And Gerber wants her to get her out. But Satu can't because as Peter warned her, opening someone up is nobody's joke. You'll mess yeah. yourself up as bad as the person you're trying to mess up. So uh, yeah, she's messed up here. Meanwhile, back at Septur in Philippe's office, I assume that was Philippe's office, right? With the de Clermont clan because I saw the typewriter. So mm-hmm. yeah. And and they're trying to work out where Diana is. And they determine that she's not far because even with witches from a long time ago, with strong powers can travel far carrying someone else. Who said that? Was that Isabel? No, that was Mart. And eventually they think of the castle that's south, Gerber's territory. And Matthew realizes that Gerber wants to destroy her to destroy him. And Gerber wants the power. Diana's the perfect opportunity to do it. And then Sarah calls and she's frantic. And you can see Matthew's like, oh, shit, I don't need this in my life. <laughs> He pulls out the phone. FML. Yeah. yeah. Really? You gotta wonder, you gotta wonder what, what ringtone he's going to give to her eventually. <laughs> Christ. Sarah. Matthew, where have you been? What's happened to Diana? M sees her in darkness. She's been taken. By a witch. She what? Emily, tell me anything. Everything that you may have seen that could possibly help us find her. I, I saw uh, 
I think it was a castle, or it used to be a castle. And I saw two figures with her. That's all I can make out. Uh, she calls frantic and she tries to explain Emily's vision. And Matthew puts her on speaker and asks Emily what she saw. There was a castle, two figures, and that's all she could make out. And then Isabeau says, Gerber had a castle in ruins. And Matthew knows LaPierre. So it's like, mm-hmm. woohoo. Yep. And then in my mind, bad. I went to Batman and Robin. It's like, to the Batcave. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> because Matthew and Baldwin just got up and ran to the chopper. To get, oh, yeah, let's go. We got to go. All right. So back in the oubliette. Back in the oubliette. Diana is alive, but not doing great. <laughs> she falls asleep and then all of a sudden everything is illuminated. Okay. And here's my epiphany that I talked about in the, the Festivus episodes yes. last uh-huh. year. When Rebecca tells her that it's time to wake up, they're under a bunch of what appears to be spider webs. And mm-hmm. that's when it hit me. I'm like, oh, she had to fly up through the proverbial spider web. That's when I realized the spider web was her spell binding. When she was having yes. all those dreams, mm-hmm. that's what it was. She was bound by the webs and had to break through. And she was starting to break through when she'd wake up from those dreams. Mm-hmm. And I feel like the spider represented the things she fears and she fears her magic. And that's it. So Don't that's it. Come. No big deal. That, <laughs> no, I, that's, that's awesome. And I cannot, definitely cannot get into it now because there's a couple, mm-hmm. a couple books down that where that totally comes together with this. Yes, mm-hmm. totally. Anyway, story time is over. Conclusion. The prince cannot rescue her. She's got to help herself. So that's the lesson we learned from this story. Yay. <laughs> 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 Meanwhile, Batman and Robin are approaching the castle. <laughs> And they jump from the copter and Gerber is interrogating Satu and threatening her, uh, showing her Mary Diana and said, this is what happens to witches that don't act right, that don't cooperate. That's what he said. Mm -hmm. And now the scenes are all kind of merging together because they're all at one place. So, you know, bear with me while I try to navigate through this. Gerber takes off because he heard the helicopter like a little bitch. What? Right. Seriously. (laughs) I mean, he just took off. He's like, oh, shit. (laughs) Satu is left alone with Mary Diana and she feels Mary Diana's power. Remember, Jean, that one episode we were talking about witches transferring powers like jumper cables on cars? Yes. Yes. And we were wondering if that was done. Apparently it is, okay? Apparently, yay, we've got our answer. There we go. <laughs> Satu had to borrow some of Mary Diana's power so she can escape out of there. Satu said to Mary Diana, you help me, I'll help you. Let's, mm-hmm. let's get out of here. Baldwin and Matthew find Diana. And Matthew's first instinct is to jump in after her. <laughs> <laughs> of, of, course course it is. <laughs> of course it is. It's Matthew. It's my beautiful, hot mess Matthew. And I'm so happy that, I am so happy he wanted to jump in after her. I know. Oh, it's sad that we laughed. And of course he does. <laughs> and Baldwin's like, dude, how the fuck am I going to get you out? <laughs> oh. Can you please think about this? All right. <laughs> Diana needs to fly. Diana's fully awake and we hear Rebecca say it's time. Remember the story. Oh, and I love this. She's trying to fly out and it's not working because she's too much in her head. And Steven's there. We don't see him, but he's there too saying, magic is from the heart and then she gets the energy to fly up and get to Matthew Baldwin mm-hmm. and Matthew drag her out of the hole and they rush her out of there and Satu is slinking out the side door with Mary Diana cause and Gerber is off Gerbering right <laughs> off this shit I'm not. doing what a, whatever shady things he's, he's doing <laughs> I mean, in that scene, he is like the classic villain scuttling out, making his escape. It's like, yes, I know. I'm out of here. <laughs> a little trench I, coat pulled over his I <laughs> know. face. Plausible <laughs> deniability written all over the scene. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Or he's got like that little robber mask on yeah. and he's yes. all dressed in black and <laughs> yes. he's tiptoeing out of there with his exactly. loot. <laughs> exactly. With, with pillowcase sack full of loot. Exactly. Loot. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Labeled loot. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> with a little sinister grin, I got away with it too. <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. I loved it. I mean, for all of our joke, I loved it because it was just like so. Yep, slip out exactly. the side door. There you go. Slip yep. out the side door like he does, like he's been doing for centuries. Right. Uh, yeah. Okay, so finally that mess is done. Whew, we're done with LaPierre. Oh, yes. God. Back to Septour. Martin and Isabeau are there to greet them. Diana looks like shit, you know. Yeah. Well. And Isabeau sounded sincere when she said she was glad that 
Diana was safe. Yeah. And then we're on to the examination. And uh, Matthew's checking out her injuries and Diana's explaining where and how she got them. And Diana's actually in remarkable shape considering the hell she's been through. Yes. And yeah. then he goes, you know, you were so brave. My Leon. We got the my Leon. I know. So that was nice. But I've got more to say about that in the spoiler okay. zone. So. Pin in that. Pin in that. Pin in that. Pin in that. Okay. So when they got to her back here is she's like, it's tender. I'm like, what? Um, it hurts like hell. She just burned the fuck out. Right. Of you. It's, yeah. it's like it's tender. <laughs> what what a crazy way to put it like that. So, I mean yeah. honestly, I think from the books, I pictured it and definitely from the show, I pictured it like how many episodes ago? American Werewolf in London, where it's just like shreds hanging. I know. She's <laughs> she's tore the fuck up. That's yeah. what I thought. So yeah. I guess they didn't want to be that gruesome for the TV show. Yeah. So Yeah, I mean, well, I was gonna say that would have been at least a day's half the day in the makeup chair too. Yeah. So they cut her top off and she sees a scar and realizes Satu tried to open her up and she's rather proud of herself that she didn't. Mm -hmm. She was proud of herself and she got a little scary with that look on her face like, but she didn't. Hmm. Yeah. And I was like, okay, okay, Diana. And she's, al- she's almost satisfied. I mean, because in the previous episode, she was examining Matthew's scars and wanted to hurt anyone who ever hurt him. And it's now she's got her own set to be proud of. That's right. Yep. I fought and I won, motherfuckers. Anyway, Gervais is back to examining the scene of the crime where Satu and Diana were facing off. He finds the little drum and he touches it and tastes his finger. Um, Which was chilling as fuck. Help me out. What was that? <laughs> it was somebody's blood. Okay. It was okay. somebody's blood. I don't know if it was... If it was Satu's or if it was Diana's blood, but it, he tasted somebody's blood and read something from it, given the look on his yeah. face. Well, yeah. and I have to say, Sarah Walker, who who directed this episode six, seven, and eight, had tweeted, I believe it was a tweet that she said, Trevor Eve said, "You don't want to know what I was thinking during this scene, during this exact part where he tasted whatever off of the drum." Okay. <laughs> no, I, I, I don't. So if you thought that was creepy, he got in. He no, was like, method acting. Oh <laughs> dear. <laughs> Lord. You're right. I don't want to know. Okay. Well, move <laughs> God, on. Thanks. <laughs> Moving on to Philippe's office. Okay. <laughs> so at set tour, Diana is sitting quietly by the fire and questions Matthew about killing Jillian. We should really try and eat something. Do you kill Jillian? No, I didn't. But I should have killed her for betraying you. I spared her life. And I will not make the same mistake again. And I will hunt down anyone who wishes to harm you, and I will kill them. I told you. I know you told me. And he feeds her back her own lines. I will hunt down anyone who hurts you. And, but, mm-hmm. you know, and I thought that was cool. Fair enough. <laughs> yep. And Diana wants to deal with Satu herself. He's like, hey, kill who you want. But Satu's mine. OK. Yeah. So Baldwin is down in the office. And, uh, he lets Matthew know that he's taken. Make no mistake. He's taken Diana back. And then we get the whole speech. I'll be taking her back to the congregation with me. He would have her face Japan. And the other witches, knowing full well what they would do to her. I've made my decision. I won't discuss it further. Diana is staying with I'm the head of this family! To protect the Declaremonts, I will disown you. This is no longer a family matter. Knights of Lazarus will see to Diana Bishop's protection. After all these years default, you're going to rally the Knights of Lazarus to protect a fucking witch! You are a knight. And you are my brother. We fought at the Battle of Accra. Help the Albigensian heretics resist the Northerners. We do not come to the aid of our master to protect a forbidden love affair. Diana is in need of our protection from her own people, and I will see to it that she gets it. Philippe should never have passed the order on to you when he died. Baldwin de Clem, I call upon you to fulfill your sworn oath and enter the battlefield where you will obey my commands until I release you. 
Go ahead. The floor is yours, you two. Actually, we don't get the whole speech. Well, we get two fucks. Anyway. We get two fucks. Right. Uh, we get the back and forth. We get an abbreviated part of the... Angela can re- probably recite the whole thing better than I can. <laughs> yeah, it was, it, it was abbreviated. It was. It was abbreviated, but we got it. So wish number two on my list. Okay. So explain to the audience, what did we get? What we got was uh, Baldwin gave a brief recitation of the history of the Knights of Lazarus and the purpose for their existence. Existence and the fact that they're there to, you're not taking the knights to go to war over a love affair. Your Their purpose is to defend underdogs. And it's a very impassioned speech. Um, and it ultimately ends with Baldwin agreeing to do what yeah. Matthew wants him to do. But we don't we don't get the French salute, unfortunately. <laughs> no, no. And I'm not going to kill it with my abysmal French. I'll let Angela, the viewers, what they didn't get. What they didn't get, yeah. Yes. Well, I mean, when they, they reference every major, not every, but several major yeah. events, pivotal times in history where they supported an underdog and the underdog won. Sometimes they didn't win. It's not always that the Knights of Lazarus win. But they always made they always made it about an even fight. Exactly. Exactly. And and met people along the way, like Gallo Glass and Hancock. Mm-hmm. Yep. And Charlemagne and <laughs> Richard the Lionhearted. And, yeah. I mean, you know. well, yeah, that would be, let's, we can wait for the spoiler zone on some of the things yeah. that we learn uh, that have actually uh-huh. came out of that help. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you, ladies, for exp- explaining that to everybody. They came to terms. Yep. Matthew gets Baldwin's assurance that he's going to get the congregation to point their ire towards Satu. Yes. Not Diana. So the survival speech, we got kind of an abridged version of that too. Make your next Very, move before yes, they make yours. Yes, make we got theirs. That, which was more of a throwaway line than a, an impassioned foreshadowing of think and stay alive. Mm-hmm. Right, exactly. Then Baldwin leaves. And then uh, I think this next scene, we're back in Finland, maybe. Um, uh, I, no, actually, I think it was like a, a far, it looked like a farmhouse not far from La Pierre. Oh, okay. It looked like there was some place in the countryside. I thought they were maybe. Maybe, maybe somewhere in Finland. Mm-hmm. Maybe she took her back home. But anyway, Satu is there with Mary Diana in this uh, house. And Satu felt that Mary Diana is old. Satu's pissed that she was held by Jer Bear. Satu's mm-hmm. not heartless, we learn. And mm-hmm. she feels deeply for witches. And you can tell this by how she's crying. And she's very upset that, you know, this this witch with her powers had been held under thrall under Jer Bear for, for so, so long. many centuries. Who are you? What did he do to you? I know that you're old. Very old. I felt that in your magic. (sighs) You're Diana. Are you the Mary Diana? Help me. Release me. You'll join your mothers on the other side as you. (gasps) Only you. None of him. Yes. Okay, so now we're with our favorite demon family. Yay! Yay! And Sophie's breaking the news that Sophie sees Diana in her dreams. And the connection is strong because she's a witch and Sophie was born of witches. witches. And Agatha is floored. Mm -hmm. Nathaniel didn't tell her. Agatha tells them that family's first and Agatha tells her, you know, she finally says, you know, her name is Diana Bishop. Go find this witch. Yeah. And there's uh, there's so many similarities between Agatha and Sarah. True. Think about it. Well, we'll find out soon enough. Sorry about that. Spoiler. Uh, but, yeah. <laughs> so we're back with Satu. Satu's finally releasing Mary Diana. And what did you guys think of this scene? Oh. Because this is something we didn't get in the book. So this is new. Yeah. Brand new. Oh, man. That was a bomb dropped early. Yeah. Yes. But yeah. It, it showed me a different side. I mean, here you think Satu. I mean, mm-hmm. we call her Lurch and she's all tough and she's all, you know, stone faced. And I don't know. It was I, I, I yeah, thought it was like beautiful. Satu's actually, struggling with her own. Demons. Yeah, I think the, I think the earlier reveal that Satu was a weaver is going to change change a lot of the tra- trajectory of her character mm-hmm. here right, on out. Right. And this could have happened in the books. We just didn't see it. We just didn't know. So well, but uh, the revel—I'm the revelation to the, the she, viewer, to the and viewer in general. Reader, yeah, that, yeah, 
But I love at this point, you know, thank you, Weaver. We don't know what Weaver is. Yeah. Even if Satu's like, wait, what? Weaver? What? What, Even if we would have had the same thing happen in the books, we still don't know what it is. Yes. Mary Deanna says, thank you, Weaver. And Satu's like, Weaver? Huh? Okay. So uh, Satu's got some research to do. (laughs) Because <laughs> she does that well, as we found out. Mm-hmm. Okay, so at set tour, Diana has had a remarkable recovery. Very. Mart's cooking must be magic. <laughs> Diana, <laughs> maybe, maybe there's a different DMT that we don't know about. I know. <laughs> <laughs> And Diana reveals that she feels free. And then the spellbinding conversation comes up. Mm -hmm. You're free inside and out, says Isabeau. Unbound. And Mart says something in another language to the fact like, uh, Isabeau, shut up. (laughs) That was probably another fuck. Shut the fuck up. (laughs) Yeah. And Isabeau's like, pish posh. She handled the whole mirror thing. We don't need to coddle her. She's good. And Diana's like, wait, what? (laughs) Spellbinding. And then Matthew, it's Matthew who explains that they believe that she's been spellbound and what happened at La Pierre freed her. So she went through the little spider webs. I call them spider webs, but it uh-huh. turns out they're her weavings and that freed her. So she's free now. And he asked her, do you understand what that is? And Diana's like, yeah, crazy witches get spellbound. Yeah. And yeah, oh, she can handle it. She like goes off the deep end because she's like, you know, she gets on a plane and she's she sits there and simmers and she's pissed about, you know, this is like not going to be a fun play right because she's pissed. Oh, yeah. yeah. She looks at the mirror freaked out and she goes, what am I? So cliffhanger. (laughs) We ended there. And uh, is there anything you guys want to add to that before we uh, step into the spoiler zone, guys? I don't think so. No, No. I think we're good. Okay, so we're going to enter the spoiler zone. And for the rest of you. After this break, we'll do some compare and contrast with the books and with the TV show. Uh And uh, we'll talk some more about this. Find this show wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. Contact us. We are at demonsdiscuss at gmail.com. Leave us a voicemail, 360-519-7836. Or leave us one on SpeakPipe, speakpipe.com slant demonsdiscuss. Hit us up on social media, and we are at Demons Discuss or at Demons Domain. Join our Facebook group, Demonic Discussers. The keys to get in are in the show notes. And if you're listening on your mobile device, click the description. It'll be there, too. Become a discusser. And there are two ways to do that now. And if you're in the U.S., text A-D-O-W as an ADAL, as in a discovery of witches. So text A-D-O-W to 444-999. Or visit demonsdiscuss.com. Scroll down, fill out the form and spammer code, and that's it. You're a discusser. Visit our main site, demonsdomain.com, to see what we're up to. And if you like what you hear, leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. Keep Angela alive! All right. So now we're in the spoiler zone, guys. <gasps> Yay! I got a lot to spoil. Yeah, me too. Well, let me start, okay? Okay. Why do you think they timed the discovery of Diana's absence this way? I mean, in the book, they already knew she was gone. And they called Baldwin to have him come help. Mm-hmm. Yes, and Isabel called Baldwin. Do you think was was it for, like, time efficiency or something? <laughs> What do you, I don't know how it'd be more efficient to. It changes the it changes the whole dynamic. Yeah, it's like they were sitting around and didn't know she was gone. Oof. Yeah, it's to me. I think it all plays into the dynamic that they're kind of playing down that Matthew's a hot mess. Yeah, it does do that, and it also, I mean, I don't say diminish, but Baldwin was known as the tactician and the strategist of the family and it kind of uh, robbed veers him away that. from yeah yeah and veers away from that and puts emphasis on on Emily's abilities. Mhm. Yeah. True. Yeah. It's weird. And along the same lines in the books in, in his place in the family is always the strategist uh, and I always like to call him Philippe's sinister hand. He's the one who comes up with plans and strategies and, and helps execute them especially if it's like shady. I'll just say it. Yeah. It's yeah. like if Philippe's got something shady to do, it's probably been left up to Baldwin to do it. Baldwin's your man. Yeah, mm-hmm. because Baldwin's always going to be the one that people are going to, you know, pile the shit on. Philippe, Philippe came up with this devious, nasty thing to do, but, you know, people are just going to execute it. Baldwin's going to yeah. execute it and catch the flack. <laughs> 
Well, yeah. and as I will say, I mean, not, not that I'm Baldwin, but like I always say to you guys, I even say to Brad, I'm like, so, tell so-and-so whatever. I'm like, blame it on me. I don't care. <laughs> yeah, and really. I, think Baldwin, I think Baldwin does the same thing where he's like, I'm going to get blamed anyways. Who cares? Yeah. Yeah. Just whatever. Just move What's on. New? And, it, and to follow along that, it seems like in the show, they're casting him as more of the diplomat, which is, it just yeah. totally runs counter to him. He's like, I hate this fucking shit. Yeah. I'm just an old <laughs> right. soldier. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Which is, and, and that is the very first step in it. The way they change bringing him to Sator in yeah. the scene. Because and, in this scene, he's just here to, well, like he's Diana. here to, here's to, here to obtain Diana, Diana because she's a pawn he needs in the diplomatic scheme that yes. he's trying to execute. Yes. Right. Which is weird. In the books, the method that they get Baldwin on board is, is different than what they did in the show. I mean, they give Baldwin gives the speech and then um, Matthew lays his trump card and then he gets on board because he basically, you know, apologizes and admits he was wrong. Matthew admits he was wrong and then Baldwin's on board. This way, it's it's a totally different approach where he just asks, is this witch really going to war for? Yes. Okay. I'm on board. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. I, and nothing at all about Philippe's death, which I think is weird. I mean, they said, yeah, your father's dead. And they kind of allude to Matthew killing him. But right. they, they tippy toe around everything else that goes on with it. It's weird. I don't know if it's just for expediency's sake or they're planning on going. So. I think so. I think it's streamlining. Direction. Yeah. And I think so. they're trying to spread the love. I mean, instead of having composite characters, they kind of shift abilities or highlight different things and mm -hmm. showcase them by spreading them out amongst the, the cast instead of just concentrating on one person. Well, and what's weird is, is with Baldwin, I think... You know, He's the book Baldwin is all there, but he's kind of under a bit of a basket. Yes. He's purposely. He, they've put him under a basket and he's everybody, which is funny because now everybody loves him. And it's like, yeah. oh, he's always <laughs> this new Baldwin. I was like, no, that's the Baldwin that's always been there. They've just. You just never saw it. Yeah. Right? You've never bothered to look for him. Right. And also it's from Diana's point of view, the yes. book. So yes. we wouldn't see these sides of Baldwin. Yes. So we are getting to exactly. see. Exactly. It's, what's going on behind well, the scenes. And in the books, I mean, not only is it from Diana's perspective, it's Diana's perspective is further biased by Matthew's antipathy. Yes. Because mm -hmm. Matthew's exactly. always going, yeah, my brother's an asshole. And then it's like when she meets him, it's like kind of a self-fulfilling prophecy. She's looking right. for that moment where he's being an asshole. And Baldwin presents it. It's oh, like, yeah. oh, yeah. Wow. You know? That's kind of assholeish behavior. It's like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that checks. So here's, here's a challenge for book readers or book rereaders. Um, yeah. If you've read the book and now you're watching the show and you're going to go back and do a reread at some point, think of Baldwin doing all this extra stuff in the periphery while you're thinking, God, is he an asshole? Or when you really, when you originally thought, God, is he an asshole? Just think of all the stuff he's been doing that you didn't know about. Yeah, that yeah. you know about now. It enriches his story. Mm -hmm. yeah. It really does. It's like, like I've like it always said, it's like, you know, when they're off doing whatever, you know, bitches are whatevering over there. Baldwin's like dealing with Peter and Gerber and Domenico and all their bullshit. It, trying to keep a exactly. lid on things, which we which we get to see. Speaking of efficiency, let's go around the table because I don't want this to be like a two hour long episode. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, Jean, what did you have to bring to the table? Well, we hit on a lot of it, but my biggest thing I had to bring to the table actually had to do with the oubliette. I adored Sophie Miles and I love the way mm -hmm. she played mom. Yeah. But I'm sorry that we lost the sense of the fairy tale. Yes, because she's yes. very robotic when she said that. Yeah. Yes. And the way they did, the way Sarah filmed the dream, the the way it was over, the scene was overexposed and it was stripped down and it was so spare. To me in the book, you it, it was sad and melancholy, but it was kind of this like poetic mom, moment between parent and child. Yes. Like yes. They revisited her yes. chi childhood one more time yes. and then let her go. It was almost kind of like a, a, an apology for spellbinding her without them coming right. out saying, yeah, sorry, we laid that shit on you. Yeah. And the way they imagine the scene, I mean, it's great, but it's a totally different feel, feel and mood. And it's far more representational of her sh shedding her spellbinding it. And you, you lose all of the, to me, I lost a lot of the emotional intensity and the drive and all of the symbolism that was in there that had to go into the parent child relationship. Right. And I'm sorry, we missed out on the tree. The whole we thing with out the on silver the ribbon when she, she's like, mm -hmm. and Diana was wrapped with a bunch of silver ribbons and she tossed the ribbon up and it took her up and it's like wait we don't get that we don't right. really get that yeah and this is more to what you were saying about the spider webs too and and 
as you were saying it, it uh, solidified for me what I really did not like about the spider webs and using them that way. There's this undercurrent that her magic is something to be feared. It feeds into the fear that Diana has of it. So a little girl wrapped in silver ribbons, it's like, if that's her magic, Mm -hmm. ribbons are something little girls want. I want a ribbon for my doll or it looks pretty in my hair. And it's something, it's not something to be fearful of. But spider webs, they're creepy and fearful and scary as fuck. (laughs) We don't really under, yeah, we don't really understand them. And then you got the spiders in the dreams, which isn't helpful either. But yeah, but in this particular theme, bringing back the spider webs, yeah. Uh, it brought it full circle so you understood what they were supposed to mean in the earlier dreams but then it, I don't know if they purposely were, were trying to introduce that subcurrent of fear tied to the magic or not but for me that's kind of what happened yeah makes it exciting for the TV show it's like yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, also, it's, it's, it's much more dramatic re- yeah and yeah. it's a way to put it on Shudder and call it a horror film too <laughs> that's exactly. true <laughs> I, uh, but I, I agree with the silver ribbons I would have liked to still seen the silver ribbons you know as she was flying out maybe you know unraveling from her body Mm -hmm. um, because the opposite end of that is spoiler alert for book readers um, the book of life that the silver thread is what begins the knot of one yes Yes. so it's almost like the full circle the other thing about it is too is because I mean when she throws up the ribbons it's kind of like also a really joyous mental picture in what has heretofore been an incredibly bleak run in this book I mean the the chapter 31 is pretty freaking horrifying it's an oasis of hope. Yeah, yes. the the ribbon was an oasis of hope. The spider webs are well, spider webs. Something it's like a barrier she's got to break through. Yeah. The spider webs really bring it to, hey, I got to break through these these webs to yeah. be free. Yeah. So, and, and remember I see when what you, they did there. When you walk through spider webs, you're all like, ugh, 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 get, get them away from me kind of thing. Yes. Well, yes. I, I think it's a double-edged sword here because it's like yeah. you don't want her to do that to her magic. Yeah. I mean, although I was thrilled with the epiphany, like, oh, that's yeah. what's happening. <laughs> okay, I get it. <laughs> I'm like, oh, but the ribbons were so much nicer. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, 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 it is twofold to the webs. I mean, as I said, we never, well, I shouldn't say because we're not to that episode yet, but in the books, the Bishop House throws out the ball of yarn to indicate, haha, she's a weaver. Yeah. Um, yeah. And the webs, and the webs and the kind of do that project, too. In the macrame yeah. project and all this. Yeah. Magic isn't macrame. Yeah. Yes, it is. I think we're going to have to do two rounds around this table. Angela, what are you bringing around this table? <laughs> what are you bringing? I don't really, I don't know. I didn't, I, I like this episode um, a lot. I like Sarah Walker's uh, direct Direction a lot. I, I think it would have been. Um, I think she was the right person to direct it to because she's a fierce mm-hmm. female, and this was a lot of that in the episode. Mm-hmm. Whether it's Satu or whether it's Diana, I don't really have anything to bring to the table. I just had noted before when you said, um, that, "Yeah, Diana was thrown by Satu like twenty feet," and I thought, "Yeah, I thought that's about how much ball in the book anyway. That's how much Baldwin and and Matthew jump so easily from the helicopter onto yeah. La Pierre's lawn. And <laughs> so, they're vampires. And they're though. vampires, yeah. right? Yeah, but they're, yeah. But they're vampires. <laughs> right <laughs> exactly <laughs> yeah so let's go round two around the table my next thing is Gervais it fits with the book that he's such an opportunist but man the way he slunk out of there to not get caught yeah. it was just slimy what the fuck right where is it in the book you think that they're off I at least I thought okay Satu and Gerber have left because they're off planning something they're going to get reinforcements they're going to go bring someone else yeah. back to try to work Diana and this no. is right and, 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 I, and I was ner- leaving Satu her holding the bag <laughs> yeah. And yeah. I, I was nervous in the in the book anyways. Like, oh, my God, Baldwin and uh, Matthew, this time is of the essence. You got to get her out of there. You know, and now yeah. it's like, yeah, not like, like now take your time. They left. Yeah. yeah. No, <laughs> they all they both slunk off on their own. Yeah. yeah. I mean, at least face them. I, I mean, yeah. to me, in my head, I'm like, Jerber, at least face them. Are you are you just going to be that kind of punk? Say right. something. Yeah. Right. You know, right. oh, Peter's department. I mean, I was making sure you kept your end of the bargain. Something like that. Yeah. He could say something like that and it's feasible, but I didn't. And he, Jerbear was probably like this the whole time and I didn't know that about him. Yeah. So to yeah. find out he's just such a little fucking punk ass sneak. 
<laughs> well, the, the whole creepy sex vibe you get with him too. It's like I always wonder if he, somebody saw those old posts from the uh, Jerbera Jerbera on, the, the <laughs> account on uh, Facebook. He was kind of yeah. like that same sort uh, of. You know, vibe. though this this Jerbera, the the creepy one that licks the blood off the drum or whatever he yeah. does, that is the Jerbera that I exactly thought of in Shadow of Night when on uh, well, well, Pergus neck is that what they call yes. it? Yes, they, yes, yes, yes. That's exactly who I pictured. Yes, yes. It's it's like, God, you better say something. Make some shit up. Just, <laughs> yeah. See, I'm here. I've got a witch from the congregation with me, so well, that's okay. And, so. and then what makes it all so much more awesome with the TV show is everybody's kind of like, yeah, he's creepy as fuck, but damn, there's something kind of hot about him in a silver yeah, fox kind of way, which is just like, <laughs> what is wrong with me? I no, know. There's, you're not alone. There's a lot of people out there that are swooning over him. Rightfully so. I'm right there, too. I think he's fabulous. Uh, yeah, I, I, I think I just he's keep fabulous. Myself, yeah. Well, he started out his career playing Jonathan Harker, so that's okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he played the nice guy once. I guess my point is this made better drama, but he came off like such a slimy punk, right. man. Like, yeah. ugh. I know. Anyway. Jean, you have anything else? Uh, when they got back. Okay. Diana wasn't, she seemed to bounce back pretty fast, quite frankly. That was one of my points, so let's talk about that, all right? Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> I th- you know, she, she, would, she didn't seem very hurt. Um, yeah. She didn't seem very vulnerable. Like, she, I mean, yeah. in the book, she was like so hurt and so vulnerable and they're worried about Baldwin smelling her blood and at this and that and the other thing and and the whole scene when they brought the mirror hold the mirror so she could see what was done to her I, they kind of she got kind of a side view the way yeah. the way she looked over her shoulder there's no way you can see your back fully yeah, just by looking now, over your shoulder I mean I think we were more invested in the action in this episode and yeah. moving the plot forward and the, the the fire that you lost all of the I mean and this, this is the same thing that happened with the dream. You lost all of that emotional undercurrent, right? That you got with her and Matthew when he called her Molion, and it was I mean, that scene. The whole scene was actually very should have in the book was very quiet and very yeah. intense. Yeah, and this yeah. was more like yeah, I fought and I survived. I'm good. I fought and I I fought and I won. And it's like Rocky at the top of the stairs more so than mm-hmm. it was because when they show her her back, yeah, she kind of was like she's like I kept all my secrets, mom, and then she fell and then, out. And then she faced it. Yeah, she passed yes. out. Yeah. Uh, but here she's like, oh, yeah, that's Ouch. right. She tried to get my shit, but she didn't. Yeah. Bitch. You know? So it makes her more true to TV, Diana. However, it's like, man, I mean, it looked like she was in a little fender bender and yeah. maybe got cut up a little. Well, and, the whole, and like I said, it was in the book it was like one of those moments where she they uh, it's more than like the, the hand holding we had here is like that was like the moment where they like totally bonded yeah yeah i mean yeah. that they, 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 they made that emotional commitment in that moment and satu just totally tossed her down there yeah. i mean book the book satu had the courtesy to fly her down right <laughs> true <laughs> the courtesy thank you for well, flying with satu air <laughs> and, and i realized that our, our special effects budget wasn't very much and i kind of missed right the i missed the ghosts and the oubliette. And I guess that wouldn't make sense with Satu's powers being drained to fly her down. Yeah. But owie, that was a fall. That's like <laughs> 60 yeah. feet down. Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> Diana's still a warm blood, right? She- yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I guess I she was her an- bounce. Wasn't yeah. her ankle hurt in the book? Yeah. Her ankle was broken. Uh, broken she and burned. They carried, they carried her off that helicopter, for God's sake. Yes. Yes. A- she a- much, and she didn't yeah. get the sedation. No, no. No. Morphine is magic. Morphine is magic. I thought you were dead. Mm-hmm. Um, the whole helicopter ride. I can understand cutting out the helicopter ride back, but it was like, we, and you lost her visions. Right. Yeah. Right. True. Did, did Santu mean, ever say to her about about Matthew's blood, like has he ever? Remember in the book, she's yeah, you know, nope. about yeah, no, right, no. But she didn't get that, and she did. So. I mean, because he gave her blood on the helicopter in the book too. Yeah. Because yeah. she wouldn't take it. Because she was like, no, 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 no. Mm-mm. So, yeah, I agree, man. In the books, carrying on to the next scene, she was in a helicopter when they flew back to Madison. Or she was in a wheelchair when they flew back to Madison. Yep. I mean, right. she was pretty much, she was worse for wear. I mean, yeah. so eh, it's, like I said, you know, made for TV. So get better and move along. Well, and the other thing is, too, is she couldn't have been too hurt because they only had two episodes left. And don't forget, we do spend a good bit of time at the Bishop Homestead recuperating. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is true. <gasps> this is true. So that w- that was my thing. It's like Satu just tossing her down, Diana standing yeah. up and whew, she's all right. Um, 
let's talk about this statue Mary Diana thing. Okay. Um, we didn't get that in the books and I loved it. Mm-hmm. I loved it. I loved it for Satu. It showed a side of her that she was devoted to her witchiness and her traditions. And, yes. Well, I and, like the way that they actually managed to make Mary Diana a character. I mean, that yeah. was yes, so clever. Absolutely. I, didn't, I wasn't expecting that. So that was really cool. Yeah. And she knew as soon as Mary Diana said, I'm Mary Diana. And she knew who Mary Diana was. Mm-hmm. She was told the stories. So mm-hmm. you can tell Satu has been immersed in who she is forever. She just doesn't know what she is. Yeah. <laughs> and then she was crying when she heard Mary Diana's tale. I mean, tears were coming down and she was like, oh my God, I can't believe Gerbert held you so long. That's terrible. And you could tell it just hurt her soul. Yes. Yes. 100%. And a part of me got the sense that if Diana let her see her powers voluntarily, maybe she would have been more sympathetic, but I can't be 100% sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But part of me, just the way I took in Satu from the TV show, I think if Diana, let, let's, you know, alternate ending, if Diana said, these are my powers, please help me, Satu would have helped her. Oh, yeah. I, I think you're I, right. I feel that. Yeah. I have to read a tweet from uh, Chloe Dumas, who played Meridiana in the show. Yeah. She tweeted, mm-hmm. in Spanish, Meridiana means it's clear and obvious. And there's our references to clear, bright, all that again. Yes. Um, I, yes. Lo- I love the idea of her being a di- very direct and plain speaking woman, Oracle and witch before being trapped. Once again, Deb Harkness leaves no words to coincidence. And I remember Deb quote tweeting it or replying to it like spot on. You found an egg. <laughs> Basically. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So there's even eggs to find in the show. Yep. There you there go. Definitely is. I don't know. But uh, as soon as you mention a vampire to Satu, Satu ain't having it. Satu oh, no. does not like vampires. She has been raised in the witch tradition where vampires suck. Oh, and, yeah. She's like yeah. Sarah on steroids. Yeah. But I mean, for, for all that I've had to say, I really like this episode. Yes. It yes. was totally different than the, the portion in the books, but I loved it. I got... I, I really did. I yeah. got the most important little juicy bits I needed out of 30 and 31. Mm-hmm. We were not so, sad. We were not sad. No, Jean not was sad. was not sad. <laughs> <laughs> These little criticisms we have are nothing. No. Oh, yes. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. But if we have to pick it apart, these are the things we notice. So yeah. Yeah. don't take it to heart, audience. We're just, you know, seeing what so we who see. Do you, who do you think knows what? And so at this point, so far from what we've seen, both Domenico and Setu have said it's not about the book. It's about her. To yeah. Jaber, it's just about the book. To Peter, it's just about the book. Yes or no? Yes. I think at yes. this point, I agree with you. I don't think Peter cares whether it's about a romance or what. He wants the power. He doesn't give a shit about that. Yeah. That's not a material. Peter and Jabir just see Diana as a me. She's she's a tool. She's a pathway. For Peter, mm-hmm. she's a pathway to the book. For Jabir, she's a pathway to the book. But more importantly, she's a pathway to a place where he can fuck over the De Claremonts. Yes, right. Yes, hopefully Perfect. a De Claremont downfall. He's thinking. Yep, right. That's that's his. I mean, yeah, he wants the book because there's power in the book. But the real his real end game here, I think, is taking down the De Claremonts once and for all. I think Domenico is more personal for Matthew. Oh, I think Domenico has like got 16 different <laughs> schemes going on in his head. Yes. And he's, yeah. I mean, he's a capital yeah. O opportunist. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> he's the big O. We can just call it Domenico <laughs> the big O. I just love the way he smirks. Like, oh, what are you up to? You know? <laughs> But, you know, and, and Jean, you had posted the Fast Five on Domenico a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. <laughs> um, and you had, you had mentioned how scheming he was back in the day, uh, you know, when he rescued Baldwin or tried to rescue Baldwin. And he's oh, always yeah. been like that. So this this Domenico we're seeing on screen is the historical Domenico. He, yeah. yeah, he is. The, he is the Domenico. And I still want to know what the hell they were up to in Venice, the three of them, with Tim and <laughs> right. Matthew and Louisa. So Sigismund, right? And I know we talked off mic. And I think in the book, it's Sidonia, actually. Yeah, supposed to be Sidonia von Borken. B- von Borken. Yeah. And Sidonia wasn't a nice witch. No. <laughs> not nice at all. So I wonder if they're going to carry on that tradition. So, mm. huh, that's a we'll thought. See. Well, he, he'll be a sleeper then. <laughs> <laughs> He's, the other thing I thought was really interesting, naming him Sigismund, is the fact that in the book world, the Sigismund was uh, King Sigismund, who is also like knee deep in with the Draculesti. Yes, he is. Oh, look at that. See, I did not know that. Hmm. That's brand new information for me. <laughs> <laughs> There's all kinds of interesting stuff in the world of all souls. Well, sure I mean, is. look at uh, Sidonia's roots. I mean, that very well could be Sigismund's roots, too. Yeah. 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 Wow. Okay. Well, there's two more left to go, guys. I know. So- Oh, <laughs> 
<laughs> Hang on for the ride. It's just going to get bumpier. All right. So uh, let's say goodbye on that note. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye. Demon kiss. Mwah. And we'll talk to you next week. Demons Discuss and Demons Domain are independent and not affiliated with Bad Wolf, Sky One, Sundance Now, and Shudder. Clips of the TV show and soundtrack are used for the purpose of commentary only. The soundtrack is an original score by Rob Lane and the Chamber Orchestra.